Hey guys, welcome back. BDC Care here. We're back with our weekly recap of all things Injustice. This is for the week of March 28th, 2024. The current character challenge is Arkham Knight Harley Quinn. The required characters for that are Sinestro, Black Adam, and Batman, who are available at bronze, silver, and gold if you're looking at the lowest tier to get each of them respectively. Mm -hmm. Her passive is this one's for Mr. J, which is when the enemy tags in, Harley may perform a surprise attack if she is tagged out, and if the Joker's knocked out on Harley's team, she gains full power. She has 1,100 attack, 1,000 health, and was last available on the 1st of June, 2023. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. So, you know, eh, lowish kind of stats. You know, like all the Harleys, um, she's a great support character. She's able to heal her teammates. She is definitely not the strongest Suicide Squad Harley Quinn is. But she's fun as an entry hazard card. And I'm stealing that term from Pokemon. Yeah. But entry hazard meaning that she does damage to an opponent tagging in, making her really useful on a defensive team. Mm -hmm. That's probably the most important part of a passive. When you look at the part where... She gets full power if the Joker gets knocked out. I mean, that can be fun. It sounds like way better than it is. Gaining power quickly by having your teammates knocked out, it's not unique. I mean, you've got that with killing Joke Joker. And it's not that great a strategy when Tantu Totem exists yeah. as an alternative, right? So either your te if, if you're going to work with that strategy, if you're thinking of that strategy, your Joker teammate is maybe strong enough to be contributing. Mm -hmm. If that's true, then you don't get to take advantage of this passive much. Or he's weak. And so weak that you're playing with an unbalanced team. Mm -hmm. And I recognize that unbalanced team are way more popular than ever since Scopos Gaming introduced them. And sure, they have their place. It, but it means that you're going to be more limited in both your team member options as well as promotions if you're going to do that just to make Arkham Knight Harley Quinn the star using that part of her passive. Mm -hmm. And even before Tantu Totem, right? It's hard to play to maximize that getting power from knocking out your Joker teammate part of her passive. Um, if cause, So here's the thing. If you're leaving the Joker out until he's knocked out, the longer he's fighting the more power Harley Quinn generates off screen and the more power she generates off screen, the less valuable the power that she, that Joker gives her when he gets knocked out. Because mm -hmm. she's already got some, right? Um, but if the Joker is weak and gets knocked out quickly, you're wasting a team slot to get the power when you can achieve a lot of that with her gear slots instead. Mm -hmm. And I think maybe part of it is that her special two doesn't do enough damage to really make that a good option, right? So you give her a bunch of power, how much damage is she going to do? Um, you give up max damage amount for her special two because it's unblockable, right? Anything with a status effect and unblock unblockability counts as one. Mm -hmm. It reduces her damage. So her special two only does about 50% more damage than her special one, but it costs 100% more power. Yeah. And so the Joker part of her passive is more of a backup more than more something. If you know, all else fails than something that you can actually plan your strategy around. Because if you're trying to do that every fight, you're going to have a lot of painful fights. Mm -hmm. Now, uh, a neat trick is that if you give her Tantu Totem and she happens to do that surprise attack, you know, that part of her passive when she's off screen and not the active character and she tags in to do some damage, she will generate a bar of power because her surprise attack passive counts as a tag in. Yeah. Um, and like I said, that's great on defense, but not so good on offense because if she's a star on your team and has Tantu Totem, leaving her off screen in the hopes of triggering her passive, which doesn't trigger every time, again, that's another thing that makes your fight slower. Uh, what we what we like about her is that she's got extra hits on her combo ender to take advantage of any gears that have a combo ender effect. And the last time we used her, she wasn't the star. She was the support character for Arkham Knight Catwoman who did most of the damage. And let's face it, that's where Arkham Knight Harley Quinn really shines as a great support character. But since this is the second time around where we're highlighting her as the potential main damage dealer, she doesn't have any Arkham teammates because she makes Arkham teammates better by being off screen and, and doing stuff when she's a support character, but they usually don't make her better. And we've set up this team in an attempt to make her shine. Mm-hmm. 
And shiny usually means making her a special specialist. But because we're relying on her special one, she's not nearly as effective as almost anyone else who has a full value special two. Hmm. So there you go. Uh, based off of the cycle, which has been going on for years at this point for the challenge, we expect next week to be Arkham Origins Bane. Uh, which is the last character actually for us to do of the challenge cycle that we've that we've missed out on showcasing. Right. Yep. Uh, moving on to the multiplayer reward, we have Black as Night Flash. His passive is Black Flash, which is when resurrected Black as Night Flash returns with 100% health. Basic attacks against the Flash have a 10% chance to miss and leave the attacker open to counterattack. Uh, instead of taking damage, all Black as Night teammates gain health and power from enemy damage over times. Uh, and that's the three A. I said that like there was going to be a fourth one, uh, but that's that's it. He's got one thousand five hundred attack, one thousand three hundred health. Uh, he was last available on the twenty fourth of August, twenty twenty three, based off of the multi year cycle for this. Or it's not a multi year cycle, but the cycle that's been going on for multiple years. Uh, we expect Ibistick next week. So Flash, what are you going to say? So he's got very high base stats. He's got good fast basic attacks, like all Flash skins. There's three elements three abilities in his passive each of which would be enough by itself for a gold card mm -hmm. and you could look at it and say oh that's a pretty decent passive he's got three of them though so i mean if any if you want to break it down differently you could say he's got six different abilities um that second one could be two that last one could be three of them so all right so first thing resurrections it's significant he can get up to three resurrections so with Fourth world, gear, fourth world gear set, two pieces. Necron Scythe, one piece. And Black Knight Hawk Girl is a teammate. Mm -hmm. So typically, they only give you a portion of your health, right? Fourth world gear set is 31%. Necron Scythe is 65. Uh, Black Knight Hawk Girl is 20. And, but if you max it out, if you do all of them, you're getting an extra 69 plus 35 plus 80 health, which is... 184% of his health pool from his passive. That's not small potatoes, right? Mm -hmm. Now, using up three gear slots to resurrect so many times limits his offensive potential because how long do you really want him to live if he isn't doing lots of damage? But you can use teammates like New 52 Wonder Woman, um, who, you know, it's a non orthodox way of having a blackest night flash team yeah she would be an amazing teammate to give him power and make up for that because he counts as a justice league teammate that she can give power to and he's got other passive abilities to make him more dangerous against his opponents too so all right so let's see whiffing basic attacks right 10 percent chance for basic attacks and miss it's not new gaslight batman has a chance for whiffing on basic attacks but his passive is the first one that gives you a, a relatively large window to counter attack your opponent uh when they whiff and you could call that almost a second ability right yeah because um gaslight batman has the whiffing on basic attacks but he doesn't cause you to freeze and leave you wide open for an attack mm -hmm. uh lower percentage is 10 percent uh keeps this ability from being too overpowered or unbalancing if he had no other abilities and there were maybe a 20 percent chance instead of 10 percent chance that would be I think a pretty great passive actually. Mm -hmm. And then the last ability of his passive, that's when I was saying that, you know, maybe three abilities, right? Depending on how you break it down. Uh, some characters are immune to damage over time. One of the scorpions is immune to only fire. Arkham Knight Batman can pick a Wayne Tech boost to be completely immune to damage over time. So mm -hmm. this passive is as good as being immune to damage over time. Yeah. But on top of that, you get health gain from damage over time. And then on top of that, you get power gain from damage over time. So to me, you see what I mean? Like that could be potentially yeah. three different... The, the main issue is that that doesn't happen consistently enough for you to base your strategy around it, but it is nice when it does oh, come up. And when it happens, I mean, it's to, to me, the best damage over time character, I think, is Arkham Knight Catwoman. Yeah. And it's amazing. When she hits you, it's amazing how much juice you just get. It's almost like you're... A combination of invulnerable and super power. Like you're just yeah. generating power like You're mad. basically impossible to kill because she's dealing so much damage over time to you. Like yeah. that's such a high enough percentage of her yeah. damage that you're just getting it all back. You just have to survive the hits from her special too. Yeah. So moving on to the store, we have the 
uh, Arkham Pack One, there's actually no sort of new packs, right? This is well, so the second week. So there's there are new packs, but no new character pack. That's like, true. You know, like yeah, a single yeah. character. You know how the, the one that we usually rely on for a clue no, for next week's next yeah, week yeah, challenge yeah. is going to be yeah. So that's in its second week. Uh, the new one is a uh, character bundle, Dark Side War. That's twenty four ninety nine Canadian, all price. And new is always quotes, right? Because these are packs that have. There's nothing new under the sun. These are packs that yeah. have been sort of recycled for years. And now. so the Dark Side War pack comes with Jessica Cruz, Green Lantern, and Apocalypse Dark Side. Mm-hmm. Uh, yeah, and then a bunch of other stuff that. Oh, you know, Survivor oh, Pack. That's true. Survivor Pack. So our prediction last time, right? Because the Survivor Pack pattern has been. That when one shows up, when the first one shows up, then the next one shows up maybe about a month later, and then the next one shows up about maybe a month and a half after that, and then maybe again, um, I'm thinking we're going to get it again, uh, There's because there's four survivor packs. Mm-hmm. We should talk, maybe we should talk about the specific pack rather than the overall pattern. Um, Arkham Origins Deathstroke, Batgirl, and Containment Doomsday, 595 credits. Uh, you know, back in the day when there were maybe marginally better packs for credits, yeah, you could be more picky about how you spent your power credits. I but think, getting a guaranteed team is about as good as it gets. Yeah, I think now that there's so many packs that have been shifted over to cash packs, the mm. survivor pack. If you're missing any of these, this is a good, fun way uh, and a good value way to get them. Yeah, for sure. Yeah, Phantom Zone is finished. Uh, Fight 62 is still broken. Last weekend's breakthrough for Golds was Bane, Killer Frost, and Ares. So this coming weekend should be Sinestro, Green Arrow, and Scorpion. And you can check out a link in the description to uh, Reddit thread from Devlin16 with a complete breakthrough cycle for yourself if you want to see it. Right, right. So as far as current glitches go, we go into more detail every time something significant changes, which did not happen this week. Spoiler alert, right? Uh, However, even if nothing changes, we still do a more detailed review once a month. The first week of every month. Most recently, that was a recap from March the 7th, 2024. Mm-hmm. Um, you can also see a video tutorial for every working glitch in our playlist, current working glitches, linked in the description of this video and in the eye in the top right corner. The main thing worth mentioning is that the challenge reset glitch has been confirmed to be working on this week's Arkham Knight Harley Quinn challenge. Yeah, so there we go. Uh, so to finish up, we'd like to give a huge thank you to our patrons on Patreon. That would be Michael DeVries, Irvin Ruiz, Hoshi127, and Nora Klimek, who are supporting us on the credited level, and 5x5, who is supporting us on the gratitude level. Yeah, so thank you so much for your support. Thanks so much to all of you for watching. We'll see you next time. Komoda. Komoda.